Hello everyone. Thanks for coming back for another video. This is Joe. I picked up uh, a Curie Fat Flyer SE out on offer up for an extremely inexpensive uh, price. The person I purchased the scooter from says that it didn't work and he tried replacing some things and it still didn't work. So I went out and did a little research on the website. Uh, the scooter isn't sold anymore but uh, the company that did sell it is offering some replacement parts. Uh, the scooter came with a brushless motor. Uh, the controller is built directly into the throttle grip and uh, basically it doesn't work. He said every time he tried to uh, to ride the bike it would cut out, wouldn't run properly. So I did some checking. They do sell a replacement uh, brushed motor, controller, and throttle but it's very expensive. So what I'm going to do uh, in this video is we're going to do some troubleshooting and uh, try to figure out what's going on with the brushless motor and uh, see if we can uh, get it to run as is. Uh, if not, then we will do a transplant and put in a, uh, a brushed motor, brushed controller, and a, a different uh, throttle assembly. So let's get started. Let's go ahead and pull the batteries and pull the motor. We want to do some bench testing on the motor and the controller. What we're going to do is we'll test the battery, see if the batteries are any good. Then we're going to yank the motor and we'll do a uh, test. This is supposed to be a brushless motor, so I'm going to test the uh, the three different phases on the motor and we'll see uh, if the uh, Hall's effect sensor are no good or not. If you look at the batteries they're all bulging. There's a big bulge here, there's a big bulge there, there's bulges on both sides and there's bulges on top. So it looks like at one point uh, this battery might have got a bit warm so uh, I don't think they're any good so we're going to recycle these batteries. Uh, let's do a little testing on the motor. I have a small 12 volt battery. This motor is 24 volts, but just for the purposes of testing, I'm going to use the the 12 volt battery. We have it bolted or mounted to the table with a clamp because there's a lot of torque on this motor. We also I put the uh, throttle on the uh, motor. Let's go ahead and turn this. Watch what happens. Looks like the motor accelerates fine throughout the, the twist of the throttle. But when we go all the way full throttle, the motor just stops and dies. So we're going to do a little research here, see if we can figure out what's going on with this motor. Whether it's uh, something internal to the motor or whether it's something in the throttle. The, in this particular case, the controller is built into either the motor or the throttle. So we're going, going to uh, do a little digging, see what we can find out. Possibly uh, may need a new controller or there may be possibly, possibly something going on inside the motor. So we're going to do some research and then when I find out what's going on I'll, we'll come back and we'll do a little uh, analysis of, of what's going on with this motor. As you saw when we were testing with the 12 volt battery it would get up to almost full RPM and then cut out. So what I did, I then tried with a LiPo battery 12 volts and it still cut out. So now what I have here is a 36 volt battery connected to the same motor. And now watch what happens when we rev it up. At full power we get no cutout. So basically the controller was trying to get more voltage and amperage and couldn't draw it from the battery so it cut out. So now by putting a much stronger battery with more current, more voltage, now the controller 
is able to deal with that and get as much power as the motor needs from the battery. So basically it looks like uh, when the, the user sold me the scooter, the batteries in the scooter were at such a degraded state that the controller couldn't get enough amperage uh, from the batteries and then it would cut out. So it looks like we fixed the problem. So I'm just going to run a stronger battery pack on this scooter and it looks like we'll be fine. We've changed the connector to a Dean's connector to match what's on the battery. So now all we have to do is put the battery inside plug it in we're ready to mount the cover and then we'll go do some testing with the new battery we're all ready for our first test ride I don't have a helmet cam yet uh, so I'm going to use my phone to capture some GPS data. We'll try to do a top speed run on a flat surface, see what we come up with, and then um, later I'm going to order a helmet cam, and I will be able to then capture uh, real-time GPS data and temperature. I want to measure the temperature of the motor as we're riding so we can see uh, if the motor is going to overheat or not. Let's go riding. We just got back from our ride. We have some good news and we have some bad news. The good news is we were able to do 24 miles per hour on the straightaways. The bad news is uh, the motor stopped working halfway through the ride. So I did some searching on the site of the manufacturer and this particular motor is claims to be capable of 24 volt, 36 volt, and 48 volt. So I have a 36 volt battery here. I pulled the fuse out and the fuse is good. So um, chances are we probably fried the controller uh, on the motor, but I'm gonna go ahead and pull it and we're gonna do some testing. So let's see what's going to happen here. Let me yank the motor out and we'll do some testing, bench testing on the motor. I just checked the wiring harness to make sure we had continuity all the way through just to make sure we didn't fry any of the wires and the entire wiring harness from the motor to the battery is good. So all the more indications that it could be the controller. So I'm going to yank the motor out. So after taking everything apart with the scooter and bench testing the motor on the bench everything seemed to work fine so we put everything back together what I've done now uh, take a look at my video on how to install a volt amp watt and watt hour meter on a scooter or e-bike and this is the this is the scooter that I installed that on so now I can go out and do some real-time writing and with the shunt on here and the display mounted on the handlebars, I can put this scooter under load at full throttle and see what kind of amperage we're pulling and why all of a sudden the motor stopped on us. I measured temperatures and temperatures seem to be okay. So the only thing I could possibly think of is so uh, at full throttle under load we're pulling a lot of amps and that's uh, causing the controller to shut down uh, the motor. So now that I have this uh, this monitoring system installed, we can now now go out and do some writing, and then we can uh, do so, uh, we can finish up our troubleshooting to find out what's going on with this uh, scooter. So let's go writing, and we'll come back and I'll tell you what the results are. Well, we did some testing on the scooter, and I'm using this scooter sort of as a test bed to try out different uh, motor combinations, controller combinations, uh, battery packs, different voltages. So this scooter was originally designed to run on a 24 volt battery. It has a 300 watt uh, brushless controller that again normally runs at 24 volts. So I put 36 volts in. Uh, the motor is supposed to have um, a max 30 amp controller. So we started out at uh, 17.5 centigrade on the temperature uh, on the motor. I have a temperature sensor running back to the motor. And uh, climbing up the hill, 
about 300 feet elevation gain, we were hitting about 35 amps. So then when I coasted back down the other side of the hill, the motor quit. So we increased to about 27 centigrade on the temperature. That's around 80, 81 degrees. So the temperature increase wasn't too bad. But the increase in amps, we went over, we were up about 35 amps. So I'm, I'm pretty much guessing what we did is we, uh, we did a, a over amp condition. The controller luckily probably has a, uh, a amperage cutout. So we went over 30 amps. We were right around 35 amps and the motor stopped. So what it's probably going to do is cool down now. And then after resetting the switch, we'll probably get the, uh, the motor and controller back. So uh, we either overheated it or we overamped it or both. Um, on the controller, the motor seems to be fine. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to build up a 24 volt battery. We'll go out and do some testing to make sure the controller will work at 24 volts and then we'll do a test ride to see what the amperage is at 24 volts. Then what I may do is take the motor apart and uh, see if I can, it has a built in controller in the motor. So I may yank that out and uh, use an external controller with a much higher amperage capacity. We'll see if we can uh, do some tinkering and testing with that, see what is going to go. But uh, at this point, this is uh, looks like it's going to be a really good test bed for uh, scooter modifications and things. So uh, any questions, please leave them in the uh, comments section. And uh, we're going to keep on tinkering with this and we're going to try different uh, motor combinations. We're going to try some hub wheel combinations. We're going to try different controllers, different batteries. And we're going to try to uh, come up with some workable solutions on this scooter. So hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you next time.